Bruce Burbank. Episode Burbank. eight. Wow. Right? So they, I got you. I got you. you know why I know that? Because it up. I told you, I, I read it or I heard a thing on a, uh, some podcast content that I was listening to that on average, most most podcasts don't last past episode That's seven. That's true. This is eight. And this, we've, we've broken that barrier. We broke the barrier. Yeah, I mean, and also it's only eight episodes. It's not like we've done this 157 times. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to keep <laughs> track of. Um, you know, <laughs> that, that is true. We really got problems if we're rattling off. Episode 316. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that'd be easy because that's Austin 316, baby. I knew you were, gonna, I knew you were going that way yeah. as soon as I got it out of my mouth. All right, so let's yeah. just let's just get it out in the open. Last week on the podcast, I said sub five forty, hundred percent. I mean, people, the people listening have seen the Instagram See, clip. That, both a, of them, you the guys pro- talking, hold on, talking yeah. a little smack. Here's the and problem. then me, me you running it. You, if you haven't, go check it out. Chooping it up pod on Instagram. I I like the plug, but here's the problem I have with that is. Okay. Is you're obviously the your production, you're the brute producer of this yeah, whole thing. You can, you're the, your brain's behind the operation you can to, do a lot of to things. cut up a lot of things. And what I'm really disgusted <laughs> with is that day, right? We go on the track. He he asks me to time them, right? And because, it was dark. Oh, yeah, it, it was dark. It was dark, right? Yes. So one, we're going on movement. It was dark. I didn't see him that far. Two. He's got me. I have my can- my phone like this with my stopwatch. This is true. I got his phone up like this to try to get right. <laughs> it is easy. He's out maybe maybe off the start line five steps before I finally got my. Uh, <laughs> oh, so yeah. he was five def- steps. Yeah, five ah, steps before five. I hit goal. And I didn't have the. I told him on video. Right on the original video, the uncut version. Oh, that, uncut oh, gems. Was, uncut gems. Yeah, but he left that out. Yeah, well, of course. And, he and I was being of nice course. to him. You know, I, I, it was like you know, you, you take care of your, <laughs> you take care of your younger brother. You're like, yeah, four eight hoop, four eight four. <laughs> but he rolled with it. He put it out on Instagram like he was sub five. Not even close. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. But yeah, so I somehow manufactured you with the end saying four eight four, but four eight four is four eight four. Because I said I was going to run four eight, so you almost threw it back at me like a dig, right? Like I didn't run four eight; that it was a four eight four. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I didn't, oh, I didn't start yeah, the. Yeah, I didn't start it on well, time. Here's the thing: I mean, some calls, but I mean, watch I don't, out. You're going to start the, getting some calls <laughs> <laughs> start from, getting the, from call. the from the GIFA? <laughs> Shock City, brother. Shock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome, welcome to the show. But uh, we will, we but will be there but, with streamers <laughs> if you're playing in that I game. I promise you, we will run a show. You will set it up before. <laughs> we are going to run a show as the game is happening. We're broadcasting it. <laughs> NFHS, maybe. Oh, maybe. maybe. No, we oops. learned a few tricks. Tom's going to be there. Oh. Hoop just took a big hit. He's down on the field. I'm not on call right now. I'm the same Mike. Broadcasting. Yeah. Do you know anybody like would uh, that's available to do these games, athletic training wise? Do you have we're, anybody? <laughs> I heard you were uh, you, you were on the list. Huh? <laughs> no way, man. No way. But uh-uh. but here, here's my thing. Going back to the uh, going back to the pro day. What's the point now? I went out after recording a podcast after sitting for like an hour. But again, you weren't sub five. Un- I'm un- you. Un- unstretched, right now. unstretched, You're unstretched, unstretched, in baseball pants, in baseball pants. Stop making excuses. You're doing when you do it making excuses for what? No, I'm saying what's the point? I already said four a four off the couch four a four. Now I feel like I need to ratchet it up a little bit, like. Don't not say six, four, six. Not six. <laughs> not six. Put that six not out there. Six. For the four, love of God. Four, seven? Maybe. I'm not saying like four, seven, five, but in the four, sevens. I could shape I'll give you it. another four, eight on like legit time, though. Like I want I want Tom at the start, me at the end. That way we can kind of compare, get a nice average. I like that. You know we, what I mean? We need a timer that doesn't have a dog in a fight. Yes. Yes. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. We can get call Jack up. Jack. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna drive in from Philly. He actually probably would drive in from Philly just to do this, no doubt. We'll get Schultes. Dude, Ooh, that's Schultes, a good one. Schultes is gonna is actually gonna come up with the script. He's drawing up the pro day. Plan. He's like he's like I'll come up with a script. That's I'll make you throw one. up. He's like I'll make you throw up. I'm like I just need you. I don't that, need to throw up. That'll Sean. be the, that'll be the best content you could come up with. All right, this is something I want to talk about. Oh, okay. Um, Tom kind of hit on it before. 
It was the WNBA. The draft just happened. It was a four eight four, yeah. But uh, <laughs> have you guys ever seen a team with more top twenty picks? Yeah. How did that happen? Then I don't know. That's Dallas. Why I was wait, wait. I don't, how many? How many? Yeah. They, they had the first two. They picks. had the first two. What's picks. unheard of in a draft? How they had the number five. What? Right, they right. had three of the top five. They had yeah. three in the top five. Okay. How's then that? they had. And number, they didn't. And they didn't take that McDonald's girl. They did no. not. She was three. They had number she seventeen. They had number seventeen. What? And that's it right now. How many? How many teams are oh, in the WNBA? Twenty five. Um, what? I'll Google remember. it right now. Yeah, look. You could probably Google that. You're think, probably not the only person that asked. I think there are only twelve picks per <clears throat> round, so it might be twelve. But like I've never seen a team have more top twenty picks or top yeah. twenty five picks than that in my life. I only watched maybe like, the first half hour. NBA. And I couldn't MLB, understand. NFL, you've never seen a team have that many. Like, yeah. like you're going to have a legit team next year. No, not next year, but in the next couple of years to come. Right. You're going to have a pretty solid team. Yeah, it blew my mind that you could have pick one and pick two in the draft. There are 12 teams in the WNBA. I right. saw the the first pick was girl from Texas. Yeah. Yes. Who was second? Uh, she was from... What country was she from? She's an international oh, not, player. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can't remember her name. One second. Juicy. Speak, speaking of that, we have, um, while you're looking that up, I saw some NBA mock drafts. The Timberwolves, <laughs> they're projected first pick again. Cade Cunningham. Yeah. But how many yeah. top picks have yeah, they I had recently, and too. they're just not He looks NBA ready. Good. Yeah. Huh? Like they they've had how many f- first the overall Timberwolves? picks? Yeah, yeah. They're just not and they're good. They're still not good. Yeah, they're just like Sacramento. Doesn't matter as much as they they had Cat. They drafted Wiggins. They had Jimmy Butler there for a cup of coffee. Like, God, it was a walk courier from Finland. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, and then that McDonald went third to Atlanta Dream. Yeah, I saw that because they had her, like I said the, last week, the, uh, the, what am I thinking? The mock draft had her eighth. That was a big thing during the Final Four game. She was moving up the mock draft board, so she went third. I, I mean, I'd I probably really take like her, I'd take her third after the Final Four she had, yeah. She has a, again, she has a pro style, like, offensive set. She can create her own shot. She can create for quick. others. She's Super quick. quick. She can get to the basket. She can shoot an open jump shot. She's, yep. she's the type of guard you want on your team. Yeah, yeah. How do you how do you guard her? One on one. That and, and just in ball screen. Yeah, right. I'm, but I mean, I wish they kind of expanded. I guess I want to say like I wish they had more teams. The like, I wish yeah. I wish that, and I also wish like we were talking about before that they kind of lit. Like, say Paige uh, Becker, right. she went to the WNBA. All of a sudden, people are tuning in a little bit more to say, mm-hmm. like, hey, I saw this girl in college. She's the real deal. We saw her in overtime. We saw her in ball his life. Yeah. Let's watch her in the WNBA now. Yeah. Maybe the I, ratings go up a little bit more. Right. I think it's only a matter of time they're going to eventually expand because, like we talked about that one time, it, um, the parody in college basketball and women's college basketball, right. it's not just UConn and, you know, one or two others. Now, there's – there's a bunch of teams that are solid. I mean, you saw and, UConn got knocked out of the right. Final Four, so now so you're like, getting a bunch more girls. That the, the talent level is the gap up. is the gap's thinning, and uh, you know you're going to eventually get enough where you got you could get 12 to 15 women on a on a team and be able to you know have a league of maybe 20 plus teams. Right. Yeah. Since we're on the college, did you guys see that um, they the NCAA disbanded the uh, the f- the transfer rule they don't have to sit out a year now one, yeah one free transfer per how do, kid how do you feel how do you feel about it so now so I, you can transfer say you you, you played know, at Duke but I thought that was a I thought if you went into the transfer portal that was the thing too yeah but you still had to follow you had to fall into eligibility yes like because I know there right. were certain restrictions now there's no now is that like it's a no is that program wide because right or like uh, sports like Everywhere is that yes. just basketball? Because I know in football, right? If you didn't play, um, what was it? If you didn't four games, four the first four games you transfer, you, you didn't have to sit out the next year, right? Uh, maybe, but they also have the redshirt rule. So okay. now, 
like uh, years ago. Or you if could you play you could, at all. Yeah, you okay. lost your ability to you redshirt. Could, you could redshirt in the first four, and then if you wanted to transfer, you could play the next yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So now it's just, I mean, you a fan of it? Dislike it? I again, we talked to you. You're the one that brought it up last week, two weeks ago. It's like. You're just letting kids, okay, you didn't play, so you want to transfer. Like, you're not having to deal with adversity. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? It's just. That's my whole thing. I'm it's, not a big. Yeah. Some I, people, like, one out of, I'm going to say every six kids, it's probably a good reason to transfer. The yeah. other five are yeah. just, oh, I don't, you know, I've, I don't I've, play. I've been so get, used to playing. I minutes. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. I, think, I think the opportunity to be able to transfer in certain situations needs to be there for the kid. But, like you said, it, it's when it goes too far to being whining and you know whining and crying that you're not getting enough time and you're not your your minutes or this or that and and then you're out and and try to find the there was somebody who was it the kid oh, I can't think of his name but he's coming back for like a seventh year or something it's unprecedented oh, because he had some medical issues plus this covid free year it would have been a se- this this coming year is going to be a seventh year and they said he went through the different programs that he played in like three different coaches, four different coaches. Football or basketball player. Basketball. Really? I want to say he's going to Iowa State or something like that. Somewhere in the Midwest out yeah. there. And somebody was taking shots kind of like, you know, bud, and, you know, you bounced around here a little bit and you've gotten your coach fired every every place you've gone to. Oh, wow. You know, so th- those kind of those kind of things I don't like the rule, but um but like I I was I was a big supporter of the argument way back where coaches could get out of their contract, go from Kansas and take the Duke job, unpenalized, this and that. But that Kansas sudden, kid that went to go play for yes. Bill Self has to stay at Kansas no matter who's well, coming in like or lose Calipari. a year. Like you look at yeah. like what he, when it was, well, who, who was he with first? UMass. UMass. He leaves UMass, they get, they get sanctioned. Goes to yes, Memphis. Yes, right. Goes to Memphis. All of a sudden, he leaves Memphis. They get sanctioned. Now he's at Kentucky. Well, why are you going to leave Kentucky? You're kind of right. in a great spot there. But like, like your to your point, like these coaches don't get penalized, but these programs, these kids are now getting penalized because of what these coaches were doing to get these guys there. Yeah, and now they're not getting penalized, but now we're it's going beyond the intention of the rule, right? You know, and, right, right, and right. it's turning into a, a free for all. But like, I mean, it's just like, how much was I getting really paid, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, and we were talking before. The, yeah, but. I agree. Are you talking about McClung or no? No, no, no. No, but I, so you brought up a good point. We talked about McClung, Mac McClung. He entered the draft, but I also saw that he also entered the transfer portal. So I, he mustn't have signed an agent so he could still make the decision to go back. Right. He can do both. Okay, so he was at smart Georgetown, smart. went to Texas Tech. So you said their coach left. Chris Beard so left, right. if. Your coach leaves, you go to play for a certain coach, certain scheme, more so I would say probably football, but basketball, you know, same thing. Your more, coach more leaves. Style offense, yeah, I guess your, you want to say. Your coach yeah. leaves. Well, yeah, if a coach comes in that doesn't run a system that you fit, yeah, you could say, okay, but you should be able to go at that point. If the guy that recruited you leaves, like, okay, I get it, but, like, yeah. you're going to play for Bill Self. You know what he does. Right. You, you, you know. And, and a lot of times you're not going to the school – because you want to go get your education at Kansas, you're <laughs> yeah. going to play for Bill Self. Right. Yeah. Right. And then Bill play, Self yeah. was at Tennessee. You're going to Tennessee. Yeah, you know it, that. That's the relationship those kids have with that, and that that's the that was the one thing that my end. You know, you pigeonhole kids in that regard with the transfer rule. Mm-hmm. Now that it's free and clear, naturally it's going to turn into chaos. Mm-hmm. Which the chaos that I was talking about was. How many guys are declaring Awful. undergrads? You know, never mind your seniors that are oh, eligible yeah. for the draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your undergrads. The NBA draft has two rounds, thirty teams, sixty total guys are going to get drafted. What set there, you apart? There's there's twenty four. There's about two dozen uh, Big Ten kids, undergrads. I'm I'm going to the draft. Going to draft now. Some of them are some of them are somewhat realistic and saying, "I'm going through the process, get my evaluation by the right. GMs and everything like, but like that." What set them apart from anybody? Like, what really made you an NBA type yeah. 
player. Like but, I'm not saying that these guys aren't, but like. But who's telling that, some of these kids? Yeah, yes, yeah, that right. there's 600 of you that should go into the draft, and only 60 of you are going to get I picked. Mean, now I, I guess the, my I'm still mean to cut you off, but I sorry. guess my whole thing would be like G League at this point. Like the G League's getting pretty big with them, so I mean maybe they see if I don't make it to the NBA, I can go play in the G League and I can get noticed there. Mm-hmm. But in the same sense, like. But, how many spots do you have in the G League really yeah. up for grabs, too? Right. What, to potentially get a 10-day contract? and if then that. You know what I mean? If that. But, like, that's the thing. Now, I know they've made it a point, like, okay, you go through the draft, you declare. At a certain point, you can withdraw from the draft if you don't sign an agent. If you don't get drafted, you I feel like you should be able to go back to school, but then at that point, you know, your scholarship, your scholarship might be gone. Like, so it's like you can't really put that on the – but I saw Duke, I was telling him before, like I saw yesterday, Matthew Hurt declared for the draft. I like Matthew Hurt. I thought Duke was going to be good because what we've had in terms of we had a bunch of one and dones that are good enough to go to the NBA, they, they go right. to the draft, and then we have to reload every year. Duke does better when they have guys that are there for two, three, four years. That's the same and then they have, UNC, Yeah, right? and then they have some freshmen coming in to fill in some spots. Like, So I'm like... All right, we had Jalen Johnson. He left early, but like everyone else, no one. We didn't really have he didn't another. Leave. He gave up on you. Guys. He gave up. I didn't really. We didn't really have another NBA like first round pick. All right, well, Goldschweier, um transfers. Some other dude that I've never even heard of declared for the draft. Matthew Hurt declared for the draft. But like you're good for Duke, but, but like you're not that good. But are you, you that good? You you might be a second round pick. You're not going right. to be a first round pick. Second right. round picks are going to end up in the G League. Like it's not even a, a guarantee right. that if you're a second round pick. And G League's getting legit right now, where you're playing with NBA type guys that just haven't gotten a shot to play in NBA. Yeah, mm-hmm. mo- most. So what makes you think that you're actually going to make the G League at this point too? I mean, most right. of the, most of the second round guys end up overseas anyway after a year or two. Like, yeah. Yeah, that G League is full of guys that have been. Through the system, they know what's and, going on, and I think, it's obviously predicated on a ton of uh, player development. Where now you're going to come in as a as a green raw uh, college kid, thinking you're going to get minutes in that G League because it's the G League, and it's not going to happen. Not, not I, you know, fifteen twenty years ago, yeah, but not yeah, not the way it is now. I think there's two or three like guys that left out of high school and went to the G League that are projected to be in the top ten. In the draft this year? Uh, I think it's at Hampton. No, Hampton. RJ Hampton, he's already. All right. No, who's the other one? Green? I can pull it up. Yeah, there's a guy. for. I think his name's Green. He's projected to go like the, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I might be wrong. But since we're on the NBA, how do you guys feel like the uh, the West Coast, the East Coast kind of panning out? I think there's three teams in the East. Dude, how about, uh, how about Marcus Aldridge just yeah. having horrible, to retire? Horrible news. Artists, horrible right? news. I like what Dame Lillard have to say about him, though, saying that they need to retire his number in Portland. Yeah, he was a stud. That was awesome. That Dude, was he's cool like, to see. what, yeah. like 30? He's got to be like well, 36, 37. He's yeah. been in the league a while. He's been, a while. Yeah. He's been in the wild, but stud. he's still sophomore, uh, Texas. Solid player. Yep. Oh, no, no. He, no, no. He was doing well since he got picked up by the Nets. Like, he was, he was playing well. Like, he's been good as a mid to late 30 year old. I mean, he kept like, the Spurs relevant. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not throwing shade at him. Like he was good at 37. You don't really see that. Yeah, Lamarcus won't hear this. So. No, 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 no. I hope so. That'd be he awesome. might. Yeah, gives us a shout out or something. Jalen Green. Yeah, you were right. Jalen Green. He's projected fourth to Magic. Magic. Yes. Uh, they had Cade Cunningham going first. Well, this is CBS. They had Suggs going to uh, the Pistons, I believe. This is CBS, so they I have like Suggs. I think he'll be Suggs going to Minnesota. Minnesota at three. Too? Wow. Cunningham going, going to the Rockets at first. So this is this is a different. You I don't know. Of, you gotta get out of Minnesota. They haven't been good since yeah. KG. Evan Mobley, number two pick. To who? This one says the Pistons. CBS. Oh, okay. yeah. Hmm. But even the ESPN one I looked at, he was number two. Tom, your Knicks look good, bud. <laughs> still, still holding my breath. They look good, Still though. holding my breath. Tips they is are, doing some things with them. They are. They're doing I'll all right. I'll tell you what. Derek Rose. He's been, he's back a little bit. Yeah. He's, got he's, the, not, that, uh, he's not that high flyer going right. to explode, but he's still got that. Like, he's a wily vet now. He, yeah. He's yep. got that swag to him, and he can he gets to his spots, scores he a little can, bit. I think they're on TV tonight. 
And he can shoot, right? I think they're on he right can now. His, like his, his, shot, his, his shot is yeah. a lot better his than ability, what it was. Yeah, which is – Yes. Yeah. But um, Tibbs has him playing some great defense. They got uh, basically an all-star right now in Julius Randle. Dude, stud. Yep. He looks good. He's a Kentucky guy, but – He's a Kentucky guy. You got another I'll Kentucky with guy it. with uh that that whole team is loaded with Kentucky. It, quick, yeah, quickly, uh, Emmanuel, quickly or something like that. Yeah, quickly. Yep. Yeah, he's another. He's a he's big good. Lou Williams guy. He loves Lou Williams. He's gonna be good. Barrett. Yeah. Yeah. yeah R.J. Barrett, Duke. Mm-hmm. But uh, they got a solid young team right there, and Tibbs is doing some good things with them. They don't shoot threes. Right. They don't shoot threes, but they defend the ball very well. Yeah, they're gonna be okay. They they get. Are they projected to make the playoffs. Uh, I think they're like they the eighth go. seed right now. The Knicks? Yeah. How about they're in the mix? Seven and eight do like a play in game with like seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yes. I think seven, like eight, that. nine, ten do like a play in game. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm not a fan of seven having to play. They did this. I feel like you earned your spot at seven. At oh, seven? It, is, it was just yeah. are these the bubble rules? This is what they did in the bubble, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah to kind an of. extent. Yeah, but they just extent. because they had a short so, season, they wanted to do more games. Like yeah. they, no, so they wanted to potentially get Zion in the playoffs yeah. last year. <laughs> True. I think yeah. seven and eight. Seven and eight are a game up on nine on and ten. ten nine okay. and ten. They only need and it's a best of three series. So seven and eight win that first, first. game, they move on. Oh, okay. But nine oh, and ten okay. have to beat seven and eight twice, twice. to that makes get into sense. to go play one or two in the bracket. Okay, like that. Now you can get hot. You can get up to ten. Yeah, that's not bad. all right. It's gonna. I don't know. It's gonna get eyes to the TV. Yeah, that's yeah. all that comes I guess down so. to. Extra game, extra money. Right. Yeah. So, what? Uh, I hear you got some, uh, some, some uh, news you've been holding from us. What? For, yeah. For you're gonna. Our boy, our number one fan, the number oh, one no. fan out there. You you had some. Uh, All right, some we're, feedback. We're, we're Mr. Runk. You're, you're holding out, holding out right, on us so, on the feedback. I've been waiting. So for the fans that don't know, former former coach in Mid Valley, John Ronco. All time great. All time great. Nasty curveball. <laughs> big fan. Big fan of the podcast. Legend. Legend. Big fan of the podcast. He started listening. Now he he sends me. Like Snapchat messages, not text messages. I don't know. I don't. I have Smart no idea. Man. Just I'll Smart get. Man. I'll get Snapchat he's, messages. He's used to snapping. And he'll be. He'll, yeah. <laughs> he'll be giving. Uh, he's actually fighting the fight out in New York. Big time nurse, RN, protecting the world against COVID. Takes all of us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Rocco. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, John. But he'll just give me critiques. Listen to the pod. This is what you guys could do. So. Yeah. Um. I figured perfect time to break out a segment, a new Absolutely. segment here, that we're going to go with Runko's report card, but we don't have a grade because we just thought of this name like today. Yeah. But it's going to be Runko's report, report, report card. Runko's report, Runko's report, report card. I love where this is going already. Okay. So from the last one, this is what he told us we need. These are our critiques. This, this is the we, one This is the one, the fu- finale with Jack, right? Yeah. And yeah, That's these are just right. general critiques of the podcast too, some of them. Oh, okay. Um, although he did tell Let's me two honest. weeks ago. Let's be honest, though. He wasn't a big fan of Jack. He did tell me two weeks ago. I may not have told you. Yeah, I told you that. Yeah. The, the over-under on the adult beverages. Yeah. So he did tell me that a couple <laughs> weeks ago that we, that we need. Love, but, you, love you, Jack. But, yeah, love Jack. Um, so intro, outro music to break up the awkwardness of getting the thing started ended. Yep. Uh, we all agree 100%. on that. We've been talking about that. Absolutely. We talked about it before gotta we came on. on so Absolutely. That's great. Segments. This is why we got Ronco's report card. This is the first official segment. Ronco's report card. So when are we going to so, put Ronco's report card? Are like, we gonna, are we going to put it like on beginning, a, end? Where, where, I, where in the show? I don't know. Yes, are we organizing a, a segment? I feel like it should be smack dab right at the start because it's going to be right out of the gate. It's, with well, it's going to be so the, it's going to be the re- last show. It's going to be the report card of last week's show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, we so don't you wanna, put it. You kind of put it gotcha. in with the music. Beginning. Like you, yeah. We we'll just we we open it up. Little five minute. You know, we talk, oh, hey, how's it going? Just chatter yeah. a little bit. And chatter and then bang, right into Runko's report, report card. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Put it on. I'm not going right to tell you no. Um, segments, he, you know, outline, I think, was, was a way that he described it, just so things we want to talk about. We flow nice. Okay. We flow nice from, from topic to topic. Actually, that was my that was the third one. We should use an outline to keep it mentioned. Also mentioned, we don't have too much dead air time, but when we do, <laughs> yeah. Tanner does a great job stepping up to get the show moving again. 
Oh, thank you, Bronco. Yeah, he gave you a compliment. He said, no, when you guys do fall into it, he's like, Tanner just moves the thing along. That's a great job. <laughs> thank you. Tanner, and, Tanner never shuts up is and, the way he's really saying it. And, yes, John Ronco. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> John Ronco, not just an RN, he is uh, an avid podcast listener yeah. of he listens to a lot of podcasts. That's what he says to me. He's like, how many like, of those did you have? A couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hooper, Hooper's reading in cursive. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I was trying to I was trying to figure it out. He keeps moving it back he's, and forth. He's, like, yeah. a, he's an <laughs> avid listener of podcasts. So oh, he's okay. like, I don't know much, but I listen to a lot of podcasts, so I'm going to give you feedback. He's like, do what you will with it. Okay. Listen, we need feedback. It makes us better. He said, uh, the fourth bullet point is, we are bud crazy. We use the word bud a lot. I feel like it's me and you, Tanner. Uh, I, I don't. Bud. I feel like you don't use, I feel definitely, like Tom's not really included. Definitely me, bud. And then I think he threw in there, we should seek a bud light sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> if they could. Oh, God, that would be awesome. I thought this was, I thought this was a <laughs> bud light live. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> um, and then oh, this is a good one. This Lots I'm like, races, I'm hoping I'm hoping this one will get you guys a good laugh. All right. He said he gave me an idea for a segment, which should be Tanner's odometer reading of the week <laughs> <laughs> to let the listeners know exactly how many miles Turn he put bike. on the new Toyota <laughs> drive in the turnpike to Philly each week. <laughs> 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 Tanner's odometer. Well, boys, we need a we need a picture of the odometer. What about week. three? What about thirty on it this month? Or his easy pass bill? <laughs> yeah, I thought I saved that one well, for last. I'm like pass, that one. No, you don't even need an easy pass because they just charge you. Yeah, no... <laughs> yeah, but you're still paying for it. Well, yeah, I'm still paying for it, but it's not. So like we want to need... see your account. So <laughs> show us the account. But it's worse than my That's... FanDuel account. <laughs> Jesus Scrub it. Scrub it. <laughs> Did you drop an F? Yep. Well, yep. All right. Yep. So Scrub where it. Are we at? Fandle. Uh, 26. Fandle. 26. Fandle. Fandle. 26. Yep. 26 minutes in. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Oops. So, uh, Ronco's report card. So, yeah, card. there we go. We came out of two segments with that. Ronco's report card, Tanner's odometer. Wow. Reading of the week. Ronco's report card presented by? Gene Who's back? next? I well, tell, well, who's going to step up? Yeah. Who's next? Yeah. G and M's the... Had some great food. The G&M. overall sponsor. I'll tell you what, he can make a hoagie. Turkey he Club can, Italian he hoagie. Yep. He pizza. Can make show a today. Hoagie. Phenomenal pizza. Pizza. Yep. We're recording this Bar late on a Friday, so you know. But the hoagie, that that impressed me, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of meat in that a lot of meat in the I'll hoagie. I'll tell you what, there's no meat in them seats. You're not you're not you're not leaving that place hungry, trust me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> mm-hmm. not, not. Nope. So go check out GM Snack Bar located in Southside Bowl. 570-342-1835. Tell Let's Mike. Go. Tell Mike Chooping It Up sent you. Seriously, tell, tell him we sent you. <laughs> no, for real. Please, please. please tell him it was us that sent you there. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> you're doing us a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. Yeah. Oh, man. So before we get off the NBA topic. Yeah, I thought that's where you were going. Okay, so I was telling this has this will has something to do with every one of us, I guess. So I was watching. I was telling Tom, fell asleep. I don't like how you guys are laughing. This is, <laughs> but go, go ahead, say it. No, all right. So I was so I fell asleep during the week. Uh, it was the Warriors Nuggets. I must have had ESPN on. Oh, I wait. I wake right. up. It's in the fourth quarter. I see. Uh, Such a sad, I might sad have been up scene. for like two minutes, like a little groggy eyed. Wasn't really paying attention. See uh, Jamal Murray, Murray yeah. go that, down. That hurts I still didn't see the. Yeah, yeah. I still didn't it see was it, that awkward. No, it wasn't. No. It didn't but look like, that awkward. No. But if you know, you're, I mean, you you would be able to tell it right there's away. So he, there's definitely ones that you can look at and be like, you know what? It's gone. It's gone. But that one, it didn't no. look like it. See, you so, would you would if you if Tom watched, he would know. Right away, because thanks, Hoop. They I showed, appreciate that. They showed the. Uh, what? <laughs> I appreciate the love. <laughs> yeah, funny it down, bud. Dude, dude. 
He's replacing. He's replacing. <laughs> but with dude, dude. dude. <laughs> Broncos report card is definitely saying dude next week. Dude, <laughs> dude, you, got, you guys were dude crazy this week. Um, but I was. I'm not an expert. I am not a physical therapist. I never went to school to be a athletic trainer. Athletic trainer, whatever. Um, when he landed, he made the. The over, it landed hard. You could see his knee cave in. So I'm like, they were trying to play it off. Like, oh, you hope it's not too serious. We don't know. We won't say anything. I saw it. I'm like, nah, it's, nah, it's, 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 it's gone. Like, it's, it's, it's ACL. And then he came up, brought it off the floor. So you being an athletic trainer, me being someone who would like to prevent kids from <laughs> tearing <laughs> ACLs. <laughs> you being somebody that knows an athletic trainer. <laughs> <laughs> and... And and Matt being someone who's torn his ACL uh, <laughs> multiple times, unfortunately, yes. How many? Only two. Two. two each one. Each one in one, both knees. So I feel like it's a good topic. We've had multiple conversations on the ACL. Fans at home might not find it interesting, but I sure do. Take it away, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of host is that? Take, Take it, it away. away, Tom. This is your, what do you think you could, about ACLs? Yeah, yeah. Like, you could, no, so we you had, could you could you could hold a whole class, semester long class on it. But we the can topic. go really into this, like yeah, like what what do you mean, like 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 how do you feel about like the injury, like what do you no no trying to get at? So with with him, biggest reason so non contact injuries, right? This right. was a non contact, obviously. If you're a football player, you're a quarterback or something, you have someone that rolls up on your knee and just moves it in a different direction. There's no way to prevent that. Like right. you can you could do all the off season stuff. You can you know, train to uh-huh. absorb force, things like that. Um, but there's nothing you could do about it. But from our perspective, from your perspective, we've talked about this before. <clears throat> you said you think that most ACL injuries happen because a person's ability to accept force isn't Right, decelerate. Decelerate, yes. Right, most of the time, most of the time they're non-contact, and it's when that that kid that that player plants, tries to go in a different direction, pops it. Um, I know that personally. Yeah, guys. Both ears non-contact. Both of mine non-contact. One was like what he was talking about, like the deceleration. You're in so a seven on did, seven, so, right? Yeah. So how did you tear tear both of them? <laughs> uh, first one was seven on seven. Um, when you were the quarterback? Quarterback. When you were able to throw? Able to throw. Before? Before Tom messed my whole shoulder up. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. Wow. I didn't throw you under the bus. He did. Yeah. But um, uh, I was, like, practicing scrambling for some reason, and I ran out of the pocket, broke down, and then next thing I know, breaking down my left one, I made one, two cut. I was planting the cut to go right. As soon as I planted, went in out. And I didn't know it, but in the back of my mind, like you kind of had an idea. Like you guys ever turn your neck really quick and you feel a pop in the back of your neck? Yeah. That's what I felt in my knee. And I was like, uh, this isn't good. I'll give you we're, – we're, we're kind of veering off, but I'll give you a good story speaking of that because I'm uh, I'm down that day <laughs> with my wife and my girls down at Knobles, right? <laughs> it's it's in July. It's about well, yeah. probably like a week or two before camp was about to were start. Were you at yeah. Mid Valley or were you yeah. at? A- we were at Pitson area. Yeah, it was oh, down okay. at Pitson area. Yeah, and we're driving home. Don's driving. We got up to maybe I don't know the Davis Street exit on eighty one, where you know you can see PNC Field. Yeah, and uh, phone starts ringing. Coach Pizzalia. I'm like, oh, I'm not answering this right now. Like, what could it? What could it be? Like, you know, it's nothing a, good. Right. Right. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking, I'm still on vacation. I'm down with the down with the family, right? Like, I'll get back to him later. I didn't answer the phone, right? Two minutes later, Coach Bazalia, like, he's like, you got you got to answer the phone. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Coach, what's up? Hey, what are you doing? Where are you? Are you around? Do you you know what's, <laughs> Coach? What's the matter? Well, Matthew got hurt. We're down, you know, it tells me down at Pittston. We're coming back. We're heading up to school. <laughs> Don and I are coming up. We're we're coming around, coming close to the Central Scranton Expressway. We would get off there, come come to the house, right? And so Coach tells me, gives me the lowdown on Matt. And uh, and I said, um, I told Don, I'm like, keep going. We got to go to the troop exit. <laughs> and uh, Not to cut you off, there was like 
a trainer, I guess, if you want to say there, or a physical therapist there at the field. I like how you use quotations. You're like, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> alleged. 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 Supposedly. So when I did do whatever I did to my knee, well, I tore it. He was doing the uh, Lockman's test or the open the drawer test. And he's like, ah, right, you, you feel good. You feel all right. Like, just put some ice on it. You'll be all right. Then Tom, Tom <laughs> Tommy grabs me, does it one time. Boop. It's gone. <laughs> no, I didn't tell you then. You didn't tell me then. You came to my I came to your house. Yes, yeah. But go back to your story. It was, yeah, go ahead. So I, I show up. I got, uh, like I said, Dawn's there. My my girls are only really little. Oh. Um, yep. They come in. By that, by the time I think I even beat the bus there, we just I just got there before the bus got back, and uh, here he comes down. I don't know who's holding him. Ronnie's with him or whoever else, right? Coach Bazali is in the room. Coach TK, right? Yeah. They're all like they want to know what's going on with Barrett, Matt. Right? Everybody. I think mom and dad were even there, yeah. right? I'm sitting there. I got. The, <laughs> I barely know him, right? <laughs> Been I got here him for a cup of this coffee. Is, yeah. This is like. This is my his first second year. year. Second no, second year. It was, my your, first soph- this was, was your sophomore year? When, did you do it? Junior. 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 So This is like his third so year my really. Third year. Know, yeah, yeah. Third year yeah. really like knowing me. Right. Yeah. So I got him on the table, and they're all eyes are on me, right? Go up, take a look at his knee. I'm going, uh-oh. <laughs> right? I go, yeah. look around. There's Coach Bazalia. There's Coach TK. Mom and Dad still don't really know them that well. Right? I'm going. How do I go about this right now? <sighs> All right, so now I told you, Coach called three times, two, three times, right? He called Dr. Henzes, has a great relationship with Dr. Henzes. Coach Pizzoli already had him scheduled for an appointment with Dr. Henzes by the time I even got up in the troop, right? So, you know, I play it. Well, you know what? Let's ice it. Can't really tell, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, Coach Coach got you the appointment. Let's see what Doc Henzes says. Go through, you know, Check on you maybe tomorrow. I'll catch up with you. Da 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 da. Right. Well, I'm Doc like, Hens is, is like we're gonna put a brace on you. We'll see if you can move around. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. I can't. I'm not. I, I couldn't tell him yet. Right. Yeah. So never forget. I, I even if if Don you said it to Don, <clears throat> we got in the car, and she's like, "What's the matter?" I'm going. His knee shot. Well, why didn't you say anything? I'm like, what do you want me to say? They're they're all. <laughs> I'm only Everybody there three years, right? There, yeah. I got 18 Everybody's people staring in there. at me. Everybody's I'm on the spot. Like, how am I gonna do that? How am I gonna break this to this kid, right? And I, I went. I swear to God, I think I came to the house the next day. Yeah. And I'm the whole night. I'm thinking, do I tell him? Do I let Doc Hensis take care of this? Do I? How well, do I do this? I told you that Doc Hensis was like, hey, we're gonna put a brace on you to see if we can move you around, see if you can play with it, and then that's when you came up to the house. You're like. Yeah, listen. No. Listen. Yeah, like, if we're gonna try to have you play on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean you could you could do it, but it's just yeah. Danielle tried doing it, you know, and, and Danielle was very stubborn I, was when she tore hers. No, it was the right move not to play because uh, I, the way yeah. that I played and the way that I would have wanted to move, my knee wouldn't have allowed me. Yeah. It I I always first. say with an ACL because you know, I've never I've never been in that corner or that philosophy of go out and try to play, let's get you through the season and then try to repair it. Because what I was taught was once that ACL, you know, you got your partial tears or whatever, you it's like it's like being pregnant. You can't be partially pregnant. You said this about UCL. Or Correct, so yeah, same thing the same with the thing. elbow. Right. If that if that thing's torn in any way it's compromised. You, you compromise the stability of the knee. And and that kid, that athlete can't can't do it. Now, there are documented things. They call them copers, and that's actually what I thought Danielle was going to end up being because <clears throat> she tore hers. She was maybe two weeks after. She got a lot of the swelling down, still wanted to fight through. I think she tore it mid-December, and uh, she wanted to fight through and um, finish the season and get it repaired afterwards. And I swear, I had I, I put her through every drill imaginable in any direction cut jump change direction anything <clears throat> i couldn't get her to get her my my only goal was i need to show her that her knee's gonna buckle and she can't do this because it's not a good idea yeah she couldn't she was able to do it all finally the morning of a game she had a, a shooter we had a shooter on at the school it was i think the i think it was a kimoni tournament game and uh she went over 
leaned down to uh, pick up a ball with her leg straight and it buckled on her. Swelled up. She tried to play that night. It was a disaster. She couldn't couldn't really move. And then she finally understood and, you know, decided to get it repaired and move on. But but it's, uh, yeah, it's it's one of those. I mean, you, like you said, it, it, when you're decelerating. It's a weird feeling. Yeah. You, uh, <clears throat> you're, you have to get what, go back to, it happens more often with girls, right? But it happens in high school age guys as well because the girls, not to get too technical, but they have an increased Q angle, which means their hips are wider than their knees, right? So their hips go out and their knees go in. Right, and that's an anatomical issue on the female end, but with the guys, to me, why it happens a lot is because it's turning into a functional type uh, situation there where um, they're not able to control that that knee movement you get into that valgus like you said where you're kind of a not knee position but you lose that uh hip rotation and then you're at the point of no return that thing's gone you know so that that's the biggest thing you have to so here would be my in thing. order to prevent it one i want to how'd you tear the second one basketball come to a jump stop landed on someone's foot so it was kind of an awkward like knee position awkward so that's almost like someone landing on you. Like that's not because uh, it's yeah. You can't really control how that's a right. yeah. Yeah, kind of in between. But I want to. I would still want to call that a contact injury. Yeah. No. Yeah. But it's just it's it it, contact. It's not it like more of like. I feel like what you're saying. If you land on this concrete, it. right, right, flat ground, you tear it. Couldn't absorb the force. Couldn't decelerate. Him. It's like okay, you land on a foot. Your knee goes like that, or ends up like that. Like that's. D- different. It's not mm-hmm. like a three hundred pound dude lands on it, but it's. Yeah, I think I only had one. I had a string of ACLs at Mid Valley you had, from you had Poland. You had Aaron. me. You had Danielle. You Danielle had was first. Then you. Then now I can't remember exact order, but I had Mitch. I had Aaron. I had uh, Jess Wood. Josh. I had. Uh, Josh wasn't technically ACL. He was more like meniscus, oh, meniscus and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Martin. Martin. Um, I forgot about Martin. Mike, uh, Mike, Mike Reed. Reed. Reed was the only contact one. He did it up at Lakeland. Me and him were to, or no, me and Martin were together. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Martin, same thing. That after after yours, that's when uh, that's when I started. Like, all right, I got it. when when I know I got that positive test, and I know that that knee is torn. I'm like, you did it. It's gone. Um, you know, I cut. You cut right to the chase, and. Uh, um, I'll never forget Reed. Reed did it up at Lakeland. Uh, somebody came into him, rolled up. He's a lineman, rolled up on him. We go into the into the field house up at Lakeland. I tell somebody to bring mom and dad up because on the field I knew it was gone. So we get him situated, get him up there. Doc from Lakeland, I can't remember who he was. Great guy, and I'm sure probably a terrific, terrific physician. But from an orthopedic standpoint, don't go near him. Because um, <laughs> I, I swear, we're – Doc's on the table and he's he's going up to Reed and he's checking him. He's like, you know, I think you just I think you just tweaked it a little bit. You know, right? I'm behind the doctor. Mom and mom and dad are on the other side of the table. I'm like, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> just just yes him, yes him. We'll <laughs> we'll get this situated once he's out of here. I'm telling you. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, but but it sucks. I mean, once once that's once that happens, the it's one of those things you, know, you talk about as an athletic trainer that when you get it and you know you have a kid that has an ACL, you sit there and you're almost like like a kid at Christmas. You know, here we go. Here's this nine month project that you know we learned all about. Now it's right. finally my he he's my kid that I got to take care of for the next nine months, and that's all I'm thinking about. I'm writing down notes and everything like right, but but when you look at it, you're going. Oh man, I can't believe that this kid is going to be. You got to tell this kid down like, for nine months, yeah. like yeah. you know that that's it's it, it's one of the uh, best worst feelings you can have in athletic training because it's what you've been prepared and taught and you know look forward to. However, you don't want to see it happen to somebody that you're uh, that you're close with or one of your kids, you know. So, so with you, Matt, when you. So you tore 
one in football. How far after you tore the first one? Did you tear the second one? The first one was both the, both in high school. No, no, no. Okay, no, so when was the second one? Yeah, second one was like not long ago, right? Oh yeah, you had the. Oh yeah, sixteen, seventeen. I want to say, I tore the second one. Yeah, yeah the first one was like two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. So at that point, so so like the second one, like it was like, I did it. And I knew it, like it was gone, but it was like. It was kind of like a bittersweet, I guess, a bittersweet, I guess you want to say. Like, I kind of knew what to go, how to go about it, what I needed to do, how to, like, rehab it and whatnot. Tom kind of helped me out. He gave me some good things to do and whatnot. When, when, you, when, you, did it the, when you did it the first time, right? Yeah. And we're rehabbing and, and spending, I mean, it's, it's a daily. Oh, it's a, it's a grind. Daily thing. It's a grind. What, what's, the, what's the worst part? You being the one on the table and having to go through it. Um. What did you find most challenging? There was two things that were major challenging. One being like not being able to be out there. And then there was a certain point where I felt like I can do this. Yeah. Like I, I I'm I'm okay. Like I can I can compete. I can somewhat contribute to the team. And then it's kind of like you being like that that voice in the back of my head saying not yet. Reel it back. Yeah. So yeah. like that that was the two challenging parts because like I knew I was good, but like it was the sense of like seeing my team not do that well. Right. And not being able to help them win. Not saying I would have made like ten different like ten wins, but I think we would have won more games if I would been able to play. Right. And then the fact of like me it was towards the end of the season and I was starting to feel really good and I was like I can do this. I, I could play right now. And all of a sudden, Tom's like, dude. Not yet. Chill out. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. not ready yet. Yeah. That, that That's that, definitely the worst part on my that's, side. That's the worst part to me, too. Like, knowing that I could somewhat play. I could cut. I could jump. Could, I could run. He could have been like Rev. Remember the Titans. You watch that movie? Yeah. Yo. I'm to go, Tweeter. <laughs> How, how good was that edit? Though? Well, <laughs> phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal. But yeah, th those are the toughest parts. So now, my um, my question to you: So now you've torn two after you tore the first one, because you still keep it like you still play basketball. Yeah, you still go <laughs> at one hundred percent. Like you I still do. like. Do you ever think about? It? I I can't imagine um, coming back like no, when you first got back on the football field or the court after tearing the first like one. Was it injury, like? like when I first tore my first one, it was it was hard to make like a cut, because that's how I like m mentally or yeah. mentally like uh. mentally it was hard to like get over the fact like it's not gonna go, because like it went on a cut. So why am I gonna? Mm -hmm. Right. So it was like I'd come to a breakdown. It's like uh, not right now. Not right now. Yeah. No. And it's kind of Tom being like that that figure of being like you gotta go, you gotta push it, and then like knowing when to like kind of calm me down or kind of push me a little bit. But then, like, the second one, it was a jump stop. So, like, it was – I don't think it was so much as me being afraid of it, but it was – I wasn't as, I guess, worried about it because once, once I had figured out, like, I was good to go, mm -hmm. I was going to go with it. Yeah. But, I mean, the toughest thing, I guess, uh, is just the fact of, like, you feeling good and thinking that you're good when, in all honesty, you're not. Because it's actually, like, Tom, we and Tom talked about it. When you think you're at your strongest, you're at your weakest, because that's when your ligament or yeah. your tendons changing over to a ligament. Yeah, that's that's the big one. Is you you know, I, and I started putting, I started drawing a graph for those guys because, you know, you come out of surgery and you feel like crap. Oh, you feel like you know, but that shit. but that new repaired structure is a hundred percent solid, and what happens is that strength of that repair goes down. Because that tissue dies, right? Because it's got to regenerate. Typically, you're taking either a patella tendon, maybe an Achilles graft or hamstring graft, maybe cadaver tendon, something like that. But you're taking that replacement tendon, making it now a ligament. So the tendon properties have to die. And then it now your body knows enough to recreate and mimic more of a ligament tissue. So at the time at that point is dying, and that new graph is at its weakest, you're starting to feel your best. Your range is back. Your strength is starting to come around. Speaking of range, you're able that to is walk, one of the worst parts of rehab. Worst part, Bernie, I love him. <laughs> one of the best physical <laughs> trainers I've ever been with. But he could 
kick rocks for all I care. Because <laughs> Dan- and Danielle, Danielle was the same way. I remember he was awesome, but like there's there comes a point where you need to to kind of get that range of motion back and rip some scar tissue. And uh, what they basically do is they lay you on your stomach and they're like, "All right, put your foot as close to your butt as you can." He's like, and he's like, "All right." So they take out like a little like measurement, like measure, and they're like, all right, you're at about like 70 degrees. Can you go any further? You push it, you get to like 80 or whatever. All of a sudden, he comes in. He's like, you ready? I'm going to 90. <laughs> He's like, we're going. Take a deep breath. He'll just take your foot, and you you're holding on to that bench like there's no tomorrow. And he just keeps pushing. You're like, all right, I'm good. He keeps pushing. I'm good. <laughs> Pushing, and then all of a sudden you feel the scar tissue start popping and ripping in your knee, and you want to cry. That's how bad the pain is, and he doesn't, he doesn't care. He's pushing your <laughs> foot to your butt until you have full range of motion. But I mean, if it wasn't for him and Tom, I don't think I'd be able to do the things I'm doing today, though. So I, I as much as I hate him, I love him too. <laughs> that's one of the. That's what. That's a tough part. But knowing when you're when you think you're healthy when you're not is tough. Yeah, like what you were saying. That that's where I think you and Martin <clears throat> both were. I can remember when Danielle, Danielle was the first ACL that was truly Mayan from beginning to end, first one on my own, and uh, and I can remember I'm not screwing this thing up. I'm not screwing it up. I'm not screwing this up. I wrote down everything. I took notes every day. Right, um, how she felt, what what she said. Uh, everything right what's her knee look like where was it where was her range of motion where was this day four day five day 16 day 75 right so i had this whole i pretty much had a notebook filled of danielle's notes from the beginning to the end and then matt comes along martin comes along the rest of them and i'd start comparing now matt's okay matt should be here because danielle was here at day five no well he kind of went – he was going quicker, and Martin even went a little even quicker. So then my question is, is that more based on – I know it's based on every indi- individual as how they are as a person, but is it also – did you see differences in the doctors? Like, like would you say – Who did your first? Dr. Sebastianelli, right? Yeah, he did both of mine. Right, yeah. So he had – I went – yeah, Penn State both times. Yeah, he uh, – Danielle – was she the same? Danielle was Dr. Sebastianelli, I believe. And then Mar- I don't know Martin. Martin. I don't know Martin. I know Reedy was uh, Hens's. Dr. Hens's, yep. Um, Corey Tomasetti was one of them. But Corey, oh, yeah. Corey tore his in, at Kutztown. And Dad Dad called me. I set, him, I set Corey up with Dr. Kelly down in Philly. Okay. Um, his was an interesting one. Paul Aaron went to Dr. Kelly down in Philly. Um so I've seen Dr. Hens's, Dr. Sebastianelli, Dr. Kelly's predominantly. They're the three surgeons that I've worked with. And there's there's a little bit of difference between physicians. Yeah. But – Would you um, say it's mostly based on the individual, though, and yeah, like their ability yeah. to, like, pain and yeah, it's, adjust and whatnot? It, it's, it's more of the uh, – th- the rehab kind of makes or breaks – the success of the the surgery any 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 so you surgeon will tell you that they're they're gonna go in they got the perfect conditions because you're knocked out cold right they've got you know everything they need to do to make sure that that repair is done correctly and you know they're they're cranking on your knee putting your knee in a hundred different directions before they take you out yeah right out of the or <clears throat> But then I got a that, great story that day one of OR too. that day one of sur- after surgery, you can't move that thing is locked up, and oh. you feel like you know any little bit. I remember talking to your mom a lot, like um, you know, just being nervous, like oh, you know, should he be moving it like that, or you know, Bernie's moving it this way, or you're mo- you know, like oh, easy, leave, leave him alone because you know, but not realizing. Doc was just in the OR cranking cranking your <laughs> your knee around like you know it, you were a piece of hardware. You know, right. but uh, like one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it with the, the mic in the way, dude. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Still can't. Struggling, bud. Still, still can't do it. <laughs> so what, what's your OR? Oh, uh, yeah. so uh, I just got out of surgery. 
I'm still like like knock like I'm fading in and out of it still. The nurse is like trying to wake me up. She's like, You gotta eat something, you gotta drink something, know that we can like keep something out in your stomach. Yeah. We had a, a minivan. <laughs> we still had the minivan. Great minivan. It is the great minivan. My mom did a great job. She set like a little like bed o- bed in the back almost so I can like lay down, keep my legs straight and like have it all situated. So the nurse is like, all right, we, we can take you outside. You're like eating, you're drinking a little bit. Like, we can take you out. As I'm coming out, I see my dad ripping all the blankets and pillows out of the van to get me in there. I come around the corner and I hear my mom say, WTF, what are you doing right now? I start cursing at him also. <laughs> I'm like, what are you, what the F are you doing? I'm supposed to lay back there, you dumb mo- mother effer. <laughs> He's like, no, I thought this was so. <laughs> so you have me and my mom cursing him out. I'm still half unconscious cursing him out. All of a sudden, we get on the road. My mom tells me that they went to McDonald's while I was in surgery or whatnot, or my dad went to surgery. He went to McDonald's to get something to eat because he was hungry. They messed up his order. So on the way back, my dad, my dad hits my mom. Can we stop at McDonald's? They messed my order up. <laughs> He's like, I'm not stopping. We're going home. <laughs> Good old Russell, though. Dude, the best. Oh. oh, man. So, from your perspective. Oh, back to the ACL. Yep. Well, I mean, that was an ACL. That was you no, out of the yeah, OR. I did. I did. But uh, back to it. No, I just want to know. I've been for 10 minutes. So, you talked about it's like an ability to or an inability to decelerate. Do you think that that could be an issue? Obviously, force starts at your feet all the way up. You have your ankle, shin, all that stuff until your knee. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you think the biggest, in your opinion, if you have an opinion on it, what do you where, where do you think the biggest like issue is? The biggest issue is at the hip. At the hip. Hip external rotators. <clears throat> if I had to narrow it down to one area you need to focus on it's going to be the external rotators of the hip to make sure because when you want to when you when whenever you're doing those types of movements whether it's landing from a jump whether it's cutting you want to try to keep that knee up over your ankle you don't want that knee going mm. inside that ankle um that's when you're getting yourself into that position of, of no return you know so you want to you want to make sure and the only way you can do that is keeping that that hip rotated out and Really, really, I mean, overemphasizing driving the knee outward because you, <clears throat> when you get into the normal course of athletic movement, you're not going to be thinking about all those things. It's like a no. golf swing. Right. You know, if you're Just trying to reaction. think of everything, you're going to screw it all up. But while you're drilling it and training it, if you could get that as your teaching point, your teaching cue, and that kid's trying to drive those knees outward, you know, they're going to be in a better position more stable position um, from a functional standpoint. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like when you watch like a kid or whatever, we'll say a high school kid, if he could like deadlift 450 pounds, but if his if his knees cave inwards, it's right. like, all right, it's yeah, over. Great. you've lost it. And, and, his, and his upper back like hunches, it's like, oh, all right, I mean, he did it. He essentially got the weight from point A to point B, but so, like look at all these issues that we right. got going on here. He's structurally not sound. Right. Because what happens is when that knee goes in, right, those hips anteriorly rotate. They're going to tilt forward, which is going to curve your lower back. And the only the only accommodation you can make then in the upper back is the hunch. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, that makes sense. Why you see knees cave in, lower back goes. Yeah. That makes sense. So my question is to you, what was the hardest part of, like, rehabbing me or like martin or like what was like you two specifically just like i kind of touched on and i was touching on was you guys went so much quicker than danielle i had to pretty much redo my notes and almost not not throw danielle's out the window right but really now look and go wait are you guys really fast was danielle really slow like where where's is it in between like i I don't know where this thing's at um you you and martin were pretty much in my eyes ready to go at like four months Mm. you know and but 
four months is you're, you're right at the beginning of that time of, you know, we talk about the tissue dying and, and, and yeah. then it's going to regenerate and, and continue to get stronger. But, but you're still only at 70, that tissue is about 70%, nine months to a year after surgery. Right. So you don't really get that 100% uh, tissue strength until at least 12 months. There's enough data out there that says that, you know, once you get to that 70% area, you can go mm-hmm. and it and it'll it'll suffice as long as you rehab correctly. That's what the hardest part was kind of keeping you guys at bay when you know, myself I'm a, I I'm I tend to be more aggressive. And I think that's naturally my the division 1 uh upbringing i guess in my education in me because everything is we got to get this kid out and play you know so that's what i've always been exposed to so it's my nature to be aggressive with everything like that and i think that was in my nature also like i want to be aggressive like as hard as i can go i want to go after it yeah and so so for me to tell you you know not just it's just not time right now yeah why you know And, and it's hard because how do i say you know, well, tell this trust me, man, teenager. you know, yeah, yeah. Right. you know, because you're able to your motions back, you're able to start jumping, you know, we're, we're running and we're doing, uh, we're going off of cuts. You got to go to this cone. All yeah. Of a we're doing plant. cone go drills, that cone. all that kind yeah, of stuff. Right. And, and you're able to do it all, you know, and, and then now it's all of a sudden, well, why can't I go back to unrestricted right. football or basketball activity? Right. That's yeah. definitely, that was definitely the, and it really is always the hardest part. Is judging when that person is good to go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Chooping it up, episode eight, the ACL show. <laughs> I, he he the told ACL. you, he warned you before. The, I do it. I love it. it. I love it. Yeah, I don't know. I absolutely. Was, we I can, can go on see, for ACL. I haven't even gotten every, into anything. I don't. Yeah, I, don't that's the thing. I don't know if anyone out there is going to be interested. But like, you tore your ACL, so it's interesting for you. I train kids. Interesting for me. I mean, you I went can to tell you for how this, to like, not tear your ACLs. How to not? Get in the squat rack, bud. Start squatting. T- are you, are you, looking, just, at, are no, you I, looking at me because I do, I do no, no, squat? No, no, I know oh, okay. you squat. I've seen the videos. Oh, boy. Great form. Thanks, man. Still not sub five. <laughs> 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 squat all you want. You're still not sub five. But, but, Did like, you see I'm the being, video? I'm 44. being completely honest, though. If you really want to be, like, ACL prevention – Get in the squat rack, do it the right way, build up your muscles around your knee, around your legs, and you won't have that problem. See, yeah. I think, I, and, it, and it goes back. I mean, you, if you're squatting correctly, your knees aren't caving. Well, that's why I said do it the right and, way. Right, and and that's building up that hip strength. Right. Because the, uh, you know, that's, that's ultimately yeah. what it comes down to. I'm still a big fan of, along with squats, unilateral work. Uh, I mean, because if you have a if you have a weak leg, right? You can you can essentially in a squat if you have one weak side, like you know, compensate you, you, to you, an yeah, you can you can compensate to a side to keep it. Like if you're doing a reverse lunge or something, like you 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 can't like you can't compensate on that lead leg. Like if 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 you have an issue, like you're gonna know like that knee is gonna keep you. There's so no stability be- there. Like. So you would prefer doing like those type of things for? No, I, I mean I I like <clears throat> squatting. I mean you can't. No, I'm not saying you don't like squatting, but like for ACL prevention, you would do more of like I'm lunges not, and. I'm not saying for ACL prevention, but I think if you <clears throat> have a strength and cis- conditioning routine and everything is bilateral, I think you're going to be at a higher risk for something like that or or an ankle or j- just because you're not training that single leg at a time. Like you're not. If you have a weakness or if you have a dysfunction, like you're not identifying it, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, and that and that goes back. I mean, we when when we go through, I'm gonna grab another one. We do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go to the bathroom again. But when but when when we when we would go through things, what we would end up doing was, you know, what what was it? Is right or left? Left, left right? So so that uh. Never say bad knee, bad knee, good knee, right? It's uh, it's it's new knee, other knee, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so new knee, we would do your exercise and your rehab. We would go to the other, 
and do the same thing. Same thing, and then right. come back to back to the new knee because that's obviously the one that we got to catch that one up. But we'd still go back. So there, there are certainly some individual the unilateral components that you have to address. I just remembered, Tom, get on the bike. Wait until you can go forward. I couldn't go forward for like two weeks. Yeah. That was the tough. Oh, man. Wait, what do you mean? Yeah. <clears throat> well, like to try to get that range of motion, like the strength back. Oh, okay. He'd put me on like the, like the uh, stationary bike. And the only thing I would be able to do is basically use my right leg to move the bike backwards and just keep going backwards and backwards until yeah, I get use the range of motion. Yeah, use the right one to and let the left one take go for the ride. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all, I was like, holy shit, I can move my left one now. And all of a sudden, I would go backwards with both left and right. And he's like, okay, now you can go forward. Then we would go forward. And then finally, it was like, take your brace off and walk around a little bit. And now we can kind of do that. It was just like the baby steps, but then it built up to the greater process. And then he kind of had to reel me back in. There was a point in basketball season that I was like, I can do this. Let me go. Yeah. Let me go, Tom. Because yeah. like yeah. I, they they asked me to like to practice or like do a drill with everybody, and I was like, I was moving around a little bit, and I was like, hmm, this 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 could happen. <laughs> yeah. This, this is like this is this is a thing I could, and it was around playoff time too, so I was like, I can make it back for playoffs. I can help us make a little run here. So you had surgery in August. Yes. Right. When did you When did you get back? When did it, when did Doc Sebastianelli clear you? I was cleared basically at the beginning of track season. So okay, yep. Because yep. I, that was the first. Was that the year you were on four by one? Yes, that was the first thing I did. Right after. I remember that now yeah. that you said that. Yep. That was the first like competitive thing I did after tearing my ACL was track. Yeah, that's the second. Mm, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna argue with myself, but that's the next probably most difficult thing is from day one I control every aspect of what he did right got him from point A to point B basically not and, able to walk and you're right and when it came time to go point B and now just say see you buddy you're, you're on your own you're on your that 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 is the worst feeling in the world to watch him go out and try to play a basketball game or run and attract me. You're like, I hope I didn't screw this thing up. <laughs> so how about <laughs> because the last thing you need to see is him go down like somebody shot him on a track. Speaking of that, we had a track beat home. I'm running the two by hundred. I'm coming around the turn. I'm feeling good. <laughs> two by hundred. <laughs> What's a two by hundred, bud? Oh. Oh, God, wow. I can slow down. Couple the cervezas. <laughs> Las cervezas are catching up. The 200, the yeah. 2 by 100. The 200 <laughs> coming around, coming around the turn. I'm feeling good. Get down to the straightaway. I'm like neck and neck with like two other guys. It's like one guy on my team, another guy from another school. We're going, we're going, we're going. So like coaches tell you like when you're getting close, like give a lean. <laughs> I remember this. So <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, shit, I got a lean right now. <laughs> I, I lean like there's no tomorrow. All too, of a sudden, I was like, uh, these too, feet aren't catching up to my too, body. Too far, right too far over these the legs. <laughs> too <laughs> far up. These feet aren't catching up to the body. All of a sudden, boom, hit the hit, hit the track. All of a sudden, I just hear, Matthew. Mary Ruth's up there. Tom. Tom, he did it. He did it. <laughs> he did it. No. Did, did, were you obviously were you there? Oh, he was there. He yeah. was like in did the you, room. Did you? Was this yeah. the year? Like this was your this the was track season like, after? I, this is like I just came back. When you saw this, you shit your pants or? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I looked at everybody. I'm like, I'm fine, but my wrist is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there, knee, there was no better feeling when you knee dra- okay, yeah. wrist knee. Eh. Knee's Seen better great. days. Yeah, hey, that that was a typical. Anybody, anybody that's been around me when it comes time to taking care of a kid, taking care of a kid, I go up to him and I'm going, oh no, this isn't good. Go up, get it, and going, let's go, get up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Coast is clear. But at that point too, like me and Tom had a really good relationship. Like we got to learn a lot about one another, and like <laughs> I'm looking at him like I'm fine right now. Like 
I don't know why everybody's so nervous. And he, he's like, do you not realize, like, you just tore your ACL seven months ago and you're playing again? Right, like, right. Like, you idiot. Like, why would you do that? He's <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> – Dude, he gave me the Lachman test. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about you, CD Lamb over here. <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been. I I was I was always taught, especially when, when I got to Syracuse, something happened with the knee. It didn't matter what it was. Don't miss an. You can't miss an ACL. If you miss an ACL, you're an idiot, right? Don't miss it. Drill it in your head, drill it in your head, drill it in your head. I'm laughing, giggling, joking around with you. I swear to God, I have been out of that place since 2004, right? 17 years ago. I'm thinking, as soon as, as you're sitting in my office, him and Han about your knee, I'm going, I can't miss an ACL. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Get, get on the crowd and let me see this real fast. Boom, boom, boom. Nope, good. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> grab, You're grab a, fine. Grab a bag of ice. Do the Lachman test real quick. Yep. Yo, you didn't give me a bag of ice. Get out of here. No, you get your own. Open the, <laughs> open the drawer. Get your own. Only the kids. Uh. For the kids, bud. <laughs> For the kids. Work that into a third straight podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. Oh, the this ACL, is what Uncle man. was talking about. Yeah, there you go, Matt. The ACL. Can you imagine? So... I mean, who, who, like, name some, I mean, think about ACL injuries that have come back. You got Adrian Peterson, Derek Rose. Speaking of that, Adrian Peterson, I, I didn't want to, because I don't want you to get too deep down the rabbit hole, but you said, it was interesting, you said 9 to 12 months, mm-hmm. the new ligament is like 70%. I don't mean to cut you off, but, like, those yeah. guys are freaks. Yeah. They are freaks. So, what like, would your you, ability to, like, this is a. This is a great point. Go ahead, keep going. So, so I know, like with Adrian Peterson, because it wasn't just he came back and was good. Like he came back in six months, Not and even, then but... won an MVP. Right. Then, do you think that maybe he had some? In terms of like, I know a big thing that season was like uh, he had to be doing like HGH or something. And would that? help change that ligament over quicker. I don't know if you learned that or I don't know if that was taboo. No, when you were... I, I um it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have changed the dynamic of the tissue. I think naturally what it's intended to do is it's going to allow you the opportunity to grow a heck of a lot of muscle and some strength in that muscle. Very quick. That's going to help keep it from getting in those positions of compromising the the repair. So if that's the case, yeah. But my my thing back, um, I don't know when he did it, but it was definitely around the time I was rehabbing somebody, and uh, and I'm like, and and the thing is, you can't you can't compare. So that might have been when you were Hooper's rehab to Adrian Peterson's. That, that might have been you know, like yeah, it was oh, like two th- that there's a reason that he's been. Adrian Peterson. Whether it, right. you know it, there's there's some extra games being played or not. Oh yeah, you know he's Athletically, a freak like, athlete, like genetically you said. freak. Genetically, you can't. There's a reason he's in the NFL. There's a reason that we're sitting here doing the podcast right now. Like, yeah, the dude's a freak, like human being. Like, look at Saquon Barkley. I mean, he can't. He right. can't do a podcast. I guarantee. Like us. I guarantee you, he's coming back the same, if not better, because when did Saquon do it? He did it. In he did it early. Early. early in Peterson the season. did it like the week before playoffs, and then he was ready to start the next September? year. September. Right. He was in for training camp. He September, did it like October, I want to say. Peterson Saquon did it like did it. week 17 in the NFL season that was, was ready early. to for training so, camp. So even if it's October, he's 6 months right now. Saquon. I, I think he's ready to go. Oh, he'll Probably. be. Yeah. Just because of like seeing him and like but, but watching also, him on Instagram, on Twitter, him always talking about like being a grinder and like wanting the yeah. process and all, but all it's, that. It's 2021. So Peterson was what? 2000. 12? Right. 2012, yeah. Like, you have to imagine in nine years in terms of, like, medicine and repair, like, ACL repair, it's got to be Odell night and day. Too. How about that? Because uh, I feel I would, like back when Peterson did it and was back in six months, know, it was, like, like a big thing. Like, oh, my God, how did he do it? Like, usually it takes a year. Well, and now you've seen yeah, people do it before. Yeah, but see, the problem, the problem is, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, the ACL was a career-ending injury. Yeah, yeah right. You know, um... 
and then you're getting a full cast. And you're yeah, by the time by the time you kind of got through the early 2000s, they pretty much. I mean, the ACL is probably one of the most researched topics in in sports medicine. So right. there's there hasn't a there isn't a leaf to be turned over now on the ACL circuit. Um, you know, so I don't know how much. <laughs> Again, you're really going to advance and push the needle dramatically than what has been done in the last, you know, probably in the 20 years before. I mean, um, what can you really do so much that's different, right? Yeah, you know, um, but there's, uh, I don't know. I mean, you, you just, a guy, a guy like Saquon, you're going to end up probably in that same, that same period of uh of a return um but you know the the interesting the interesting thing with with Saquon when when he did it was you know you look at the size of his legs yeah. and what he's been squatting deadlifting i mean he he was an was animal he not at Penn contact? state uh yeah i think yeah, he did it on a cut was. yeah but know, i mean so. i'm not surprised the force that he yes. must be generating right. is yes. right that? and how dynamic he is that's what, right yeah. like <laughs> Because, like we said, it's not a matter of people think I need to get faster, I need to get faster, I need to get faster. You need to stop quicker. Right. You know, what's separating that high-level athlete is who can stop faster. His ability to stop. And then be able to go. go again. Right. Right. And 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 be as efficient as possible. Um, you know, but, but like you said, when, he, when he's as big as he is there, moving as fast as he can, <laughs> there's only so much. Your body can go through. Your body, yeah, that, that structure can take right in, in trying to stop your body so then like you look like you look at saquon you look at odell do you think like i know for me like it was a second thought for an, an extent like do you think they have like that idea of not wanting to cut or make that move that they did to, that tore their acl yes there's no doubt like they that get fear back in that, that same get, fear that same fear that that yeah. that, that that little thought that that voice in the back of your head saying don't make this move mm-hmm. don't make this mm-hmm. cut yeah until until maybe three or four times they actually they actually do it just because of instinct right because it's a natural reaction to them and they're like all right maybe i can do this uh-huh. yeah it's a it's a natural it's a natural reaction and and just because it's those guys doesn't mean that 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 inhibition is gone because in actuality the stakes are higher for those guys that that cut if i avoid that cut that could mean how many millions of dollars for me in earnings down the road if i pop this thing again you know this this is generational money right. that that they're uh, so that's on the line so instead of making that cut they go out of bounds so, or they go right, down right right you know so they they're still going to have to get over that mental hurdle in rehabbing and getting back out to play to get back to the level of pre-injury saquon and too, I feel like before you ever have an injury like that, you like, oh, it's never going to happen to me. And then it happens to you, and you're like, oh, well, it could happen again. Right. Just like you said. Like, you, you, I never thought How of many it. times have you made that cut without a problem? Every day. All of a sudden, that oh. July day or early August day at, down in Pittston, Pennsylvania, All of a was sudden, the time that yeah, right. you popped it and you're on the shelf for the rest is history. nine months. Here you are. No, big no, big no, podcaster now. Big, <laughs> big time. <laughs> ruined ruined his career. <laughs> we got twenty five listeners, you know. Tex- on a, on the road to thirty. <laughs> Te- Texas doesn't like us anymore, though. No, it's a lot of a lot, oh, yeah. of, a lot of Scranton now. Like Scranton's making we're sta- it. We're starting to get popular in the in yeah local in the hood, huh? Local, yeah. We went like we went outside of our demographic, outside of our area. And now we're, we we're bringing it back it in, yeah. We did the opposite of what most people do. They start in their demographic and expand out. We expanded out and then brought it back in. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot, you know, because of... G&M Snack Bar. G&M Snack Bar. Mm-hmm. Runko's Report Card. <laughs> yep. You know. Tanner's Odometer. <laughs> <laughs> and the soothing sounds of Jack Kelly. <laughs> He's the best. He's the best. Yeah, and I mean, we got some big things in the work. Like, we can't fully 
say what we potentially have planned because we don't want to jinx it. Right. But like a couple episodes from now, like we got some we got some things. It's gonna be exciting. In the works. More so for us, maybe not for the <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm excited about. I'm I'm super excited. I wish it was it's a little ways out. A couple a weeks month. out, yeah. A couple, month, a couple month yeah, today. yeah, yeah. But I mean we're gonna get some good content, some unique content and we're gonna continue to try to bring some interesting people that we know oh, yeah. on board. This one we needed a we needed a reset, right? We had yeah. the NCAA tournament. This was our this is kind of our little debriefing period. This was our, who else we'll would really want to talk about the ACL as well, like with us, like you know, like you imagine Jack. It's a great topic, though. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. We, I think I feel like we gave a lot of great. I don't know information to the viewer, to the listeners. You, you could you could pump that up on the uh, clip up that little segment there. Pump that up out, of the ACL out there, yeah, yeah, out there in the uh, the sports medicine. Uh, oh, that little segment was like an hour long. Like I think we started talking about the ACL at a half hour in, we're at an hour and twenty in. Like it was a long time. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think you can get a bunch of. I think it's a topic people listen to. I know. I know myself when I look for podcasts. Obviously, I end up looking for the the sports medicine. <clears throat> Uh, angle of things, or you know that kind of stuff, to see what I like the mental aspect. What people of sports. Are, I like yeah. to listen to that. Yeah. Like how how they go about their day, or how they go about like game day, or how they go about oh, it's a championship game. How do they change their whole mind aspect? Like LeBron James, like he go, he always says like zero dark thirty. All of a sudden, when it comes to playoffs, mm-hmm. cancels all social media, puts his phone away. Like. Why why did that switch all of a sudden? I mean, I get it's the playoffs, but like, right. why not during the? F- why aren't you doing it all? all yeah, year? why why aren't you doing it all year? Like, I I like that aspect, but I I, I do also like the sports medicine too, like how, why they're doing certain things or why they do a certain thing with LeBron James and maybe not doing the same thing with Russell Westbrook. Yeah, like what makes those two guys? They're very similar, but what makes them different? Right. Like I like that aspect of it too. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I I like the. I like that you know when you when you're talking to people and just in the different parts of sports that we're accustomed to seeing and just how like kind of on on that point where how do you go about your business? Yeah. Whether it's a referee, whether it's a somebody in ticket sales, whether you know it's right. A, is it golf course management? Golf course management. Yeah. No, we don't know, but but yeah, who uh, knows? you know. To to sit there and go for those, wow! I never thought about that moments. Junior high baseball coach, whatever. Yeah, you know, for free. <laughs> Dude, defense looks good, man. It looks good. It looks all right. Yeah, because you went up there with a crowbar and put it back into I place. I got a great idea. <laughs> I'm like cutting edge. Dude, I actually said, guys, listen. You know how last week we hit on. That side of the fence. We're gonna hit the opposite side <laughs> of the fence today. Just to straighten it right out. All right. Well, this was. I mean, I feel like. I feel like this was good. Good show. Good show. This was a we good show. Can't out. wait. Can't wait to see what the report. What do you, early predictions on what the report card might be next week? C minus. He's gonna. He's gonna crush us. Yes. He's C-. gonna C-. crush us because we were all over the board. Yeah. C-. Uh, C-. I see. I think Runko being in the nursing field and John. We're not trying to. We're not trying to influence your opinion. We're just, you know, no, you won't. do you. He yeah, won't. give us. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Hey, well, yeah, he's yeah, not gonna. They won't. That's right. true. This won't affect him at all. I'm going with like. I think he's gonna give us a solid B. No. He's in the. He's in the healthcare field. I feel like he's gonna find this interesting. The ACL talk. I think he's gonna like you. I think he's gonna find it interesting. I'm gonna say somewhere in the B's could be a B plus. Right. Nah. I, don't, I don't think we're hitting A's, but I'm gonna say B. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give us a B. I think the organizational component. I agree. Is gonna come down and make C-. or break a. But once we, once, once we got to the ACL, I know he doesn't like that. Once we got to the ACL talk, we were on point. No, you got, well, you got two guys that can talk a lot about ACLs, you know. I was here. <laughs> yeah, but what do you know about ACLs, CD Lamb? But I try to prevent them. You did prevent it. I try, try to. Yeah, see, like if I wasn't reverse lunging, baby, this thing would have went out. I think it's I think it's coming to the point where we have to release that video publicly. It's no. definitely got to. No. I told you the plan for that video 
and we didn't we didn't go about it. So the no, viewers need to see. You're done. It. What? The people what was need it? To see I, it. I gave you the I gave you the idea of the video. Told you. The people need to see. And, and and we just never went about it, so it's it's over. I don't know where you're going. Hey, this was Trooping It Up, episode eight. Thanks for listening. Maybe we'll have some music after this. Maybe we won't. We don't know. We'll see you next we'll see week. Ya. It's been a pleasure.